In this video, we will discuss the new EtherCAT redundancy feature introduced in the PowerPMAC firmware version 2.7 and higher. This feature is designed to allow EtherCAT to continue working even if there is a cable break. This video will cover the hardware and software requirements to use this feature. We will also show how to identify where the cable break occurred and how to recover if multiple cable breaks occur using some new commands after fixing the issue. First, we will discuss the necessary hardware. All slave devices must be wired in a ring configuration. This is similar to the standard method of daisy chaining all of the slaves together, except that the last slave will have an additional EtherCAT cable coming from its output, which will also communicate with the master. Because PowerPMAC only has one EtherCAT master port, using this feature requires an EtherCAT junction slave, such as the Omron GX-JC03. By connecting the junction slave as the first EtherCAT slave device, the output from that last slave can be brought back into the junction slave so the PMAC can access it. Next, we will discuss the software configuration. Configuring EtherCAT with redundancy is largely the same as configuring EtherCAT normally. There are only two key differences. First, you will need to set ECAT index 0.redundancy to 1 before you configure EtherCAT. You should then perform an ECAT reset so that the stack may initialize, expecting to see the dual connections. Second, you will want to select the Disable LRW checkbox of each slave device. After configuring the software and hardware, you can enable EtherCAT and use it as normal. There are a few useful parameters to be aware of to help monitor the status of your EtherCAT ring. First, of course, is just ECAT index 0.redundancy, which indicates whether or not PMAC is expecting the network to have redundancy. Next is ECAT index 0.redundant line break. This parameter is a status of sorts that tells you whether or not the redundancy is achieved. If a ring break occurs anywhere, this element should go true. The third parameter is ECAT index 0.notalldevs operational. This status element will tell you if, at any point, any devices are no longer operational. This typically will indicate that PMAC has completely lost contact with one or more devices, such as if two ring breaks occur. At this point, however, all slaves communicating with PMAC will stay in operational mode. If communication with all slave devices is recovered, such as by fixing all but one or even all of the ring breaks, the previously lost slaves will most likely be in safe op and a user can manually clear the not all devs operational bit. This can be used to troubleshoot a ring break. Since we will not know where specifically the ring broke if redundant line break goes true, by introducing a ring break at a known location and then fixing it, all devices between that known location and the unknown break will enter safe op mode. This will then tell us that the break must be between the last device and safe op and the first device still in op. Finally, firmware 2.7 also introduces a new command which can be used to recover from these states after addressing the mechanical or electrical failure. The new function, ecat set slave state machine, can be used to directly instruct a slave device to enter a specific state. As a reminder, a state of 1 indicates init or initialization mode a state of 2 indicates pre-op or pre-operational mode, a state of 4 indicates safe op or a safety state, and a state of 8 indicates op or operational. To recover from the ring break, we will use this command to force each device in the safe op state first into the pre-op state and then back into the op state. This command will have four arguments, the master index number, usually 0, then the slave index number, the desired state, and a timeout in milliseconds. If the command fails, you may want to try going to a different state, such as init, or increase your timeout in the case the slave device was just slow. We will issue L0 equals ecat set slave state machine parenthesis 0, 1, 2, 2000 to put slave index 1 into the pre-op state. We can then issue the same command, changing the 2 to an 8, to put the device back into the operational state. After each of these commands, we can query L0. If it is 0, that indicates the change was successful. 
if the command does fail, we can monitor ecatindex0.error to get more information on the failure. Alternately, we can watch ecatindex0.slaveindex1.state and watch what state the slave is in. After repeating the process for all of our slave devices, we can then continue to use these devices. We hope this video has answered any questions you may have about our new EtherCAT redundancy feature. If you still have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to an Omron representative.